Good morning, Year 9. I hope you're well and having a lovely day. Please read about the date and the title, Claudio as a Hero. For this lesson, you will need a copy of the extract from Act 5, Scene 3, access to YouTube to watch some clips, and different coloured pens and highlighters. For also be able to make sure you have everything you need. Okay, so don't worry, we haven't missed Act 5, Scene 2. We will come back to it. We're going to continue our focus on Claudio for now looking at how he responds to Hero's alleged death. Next time we'll look at Benedict and Beatrice's relationship and how it develops throughout the play. So for your do now, I'd like you to write an epitaph for two of the main characters. An epitaph is a phrase or form of words written in memory of a person who has died, especially as an inscription on a tombstone. So pause the video for five minutes to do this now. So hang her an epitaph upon her tomb. At the end of Act 5, Scene 1, Leonardo instructs Claudio to hang an epitaph on Hero's tomb. What do you think Hero's epitaph should say? Pause the video for three minutes to write an epitaph for Hero. So this is her actual epitaph that Claudio um, comes up with. Done to death by slanderous tongues was the hero that here lies, death in guerdon of her wrongs gives her fame which never dies. So the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. So today's focus is who is Claudio? Is he the hero of the play? I'd like you to watch the scene summary of Act 5, Scene 3 and then the clip from the scene. Write down your first impressions about this scene. How is Claudio presented here? Pause the video for 10 minutes in order to do this now. So a song and prayers for Hero. Two minutes. Please read through the section on the slide and then we'll analyse it together. Pause the video to do this now. Okay, so after he sung the epitaph, Claudio promises to return and do this ritual of mourning each year for Hero. Don Pedro also prays and references the changing time by mentioning the sun god Phoebus, Apollo, and his chariot. Claudio finishes with a reference to another holy being, Hymen, goddess of marriage. So now we're going to consider the structure of a tragedy and a comedy. And so many of Shakespeare's tragedies work on this tragic structure you can see on the slide. You've got a prologue, where you're introduced to the characters and some background. You've got some conflict, rising action as, as the stakes build. Then you have the climax, where everything comes to a head. Then you have falling action, where the tension dissipates slightly, it gets lesser, um, and then you have the denouement at the end where everything comes together. So in many ways you could argue that much to do and much nothing follows this structure. Act 4, scene 1 is the climatic moment um, of the wedding and that's what everything builds up to. However, a tragedy ends with the death of a tragic hero. A comedy ends with a wedding or a dance. So having the wedding scene in Act 4 is a big clue that it's not the end of the play and things will be resolved. So pause the video for about five minutes to make notes on this. So I'd like you to read this information and make notes on it. The context of a hero. The term hero is derived from a Greek word that means a person who faces adversity, which means hard times, or demonstrates courage in the face of danger. However, sometimes he faces downfall as well. When a hero confronts downfall, he is recognised as a tragic hero or protagonist. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, characterises these plays or stories in which the main character is a tragic hero as tragedies. Here, the hero confronts his downfall, whether due to fate or by his own mistake or any other social reason. So please pause the video for a couple of minutes to make notes on this now. But is much ado about nothing a tragedy? No, it's a comedy. So why might we consider hero Claudio a tragic hero? He faces downfall due to his own mistake. He is jealous and quick to react without thinking things through. So who might we consider as a hero in this play? It might depend on what your definition includes. I'd like you to spend 10 minutes to make a list with reasons of the people that you think be, could be considered heroes and why. And do please read the information on the slide before you do that. So pause the video to do that now. 
Okay, so it's hard to identify a main character in Much Ado, because there are so many important people, and a couple of different plots running through the play. You might have considered the following characters. Benedict. He's prepared to challenge his friend to a duel, to do the right thing by his loved one. Beatrice. She faces challenges and the audience sympathises with her, with her journey throughout. Claudio. He's brave, capable and admired, but makes mistakes which lead to his grief and lost love. And finally, Hero. She copes with the challenge of being publicly shamed and thought dead. So make sure you've made notes on at least one of these characters. And finally, Reflection. Who do you think is the hero of the story? I'd like you to write a paragraph explaining why. So who do you think and why? Make sure you use evidence from the play to justify your opinion. As a challenge, please could you explore the effect of language and structure to show the heroic behaviour and include reference to context as well. So pause the video for 15 minutes to do that now. Right, well done for your work today. Next time we'll be looking at Act 5, Scene 2 and reflecting on the relationship between Beatrice and Benedict across the play. So that is the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much and speak to you next time.